And for more on this, we're joined by Amin Ayoub from Rabat, economic consultant and an educator, an expert on this subject as well. Amin, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. So first of all, what caused this sort of spectacular collapse of a party that was a dominant party in Moroccan politics? Well, uh, many things were uh, caused this uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, so uh, uh, first of all, uh, the, the, the uh, people were actually overwhelmed by the negativity of this party for the last 10 years with all their uh, I mean, they were talking about things that were changing, that would change when they came to uh, to power and things like that. But actually, nothing changed for for the for the citizens. Also, uh, the turnout was over 50 percent, and most of the voters were under 44 uh, years uh, years old. So, uh, so it's it's young voters. Uh, turnout was great. So people were actually uh, want wants people want change. But will they get changed? Because there is always the question of if the political system really has the ability to influence what's happening in Morocco when the king has so much sort of the real influence in his hands on on most issues in the country. So Morocco, uh, Morocco is actually a constitutional monarchy. We have uh, we have uh, the head of government, and we have the head of state, which is the king. Right. So uh, every day, uh, every day, business is taken or, uh, or taken care of by the government and the parliament. But uh, long-term vision and long-term projects is actually taken uh, care of by the by the head of, uh, of state, which is the king. Yeah, and uh, you know, speaking on that matter, for instance, foreign relations and long-term prospects in foreign relations, uh, we know that the king Muhammad the sixth he was more in favor, for instance, of the normalization deal between Morocco and Israel. And the prime minister who represented the government was very much against. And now the king may appoint a new prime minister. Does this sort of bode well, maybe, for relations between Israel and Morocco? Well, the relations between Israel and Morocco are already uh, in the, uh, I mean, they're, they're going great. And uh, I don't think the change in government will change things. But uh, I, I didn't see actually the head of government being against it. I think the the party was against it, but the head of the government, as you probably saw, when the when the delegation came here, he actually signed those agreements. Right. So uh, the government is not actually against it, but the the the, the party was against it. But uh, the Israeli Moroccan relations are actually in good hands. Okay. Well, uh, certainly uh, that's uh, one uh, area where uh, progress is being me being made. But uh, generally, uh, the turnout there also wasn't that high, uh, from what I understand. It, was this a good turnout considered, where people uh, wanted to go to the polls and influence uh, their country's future in these elections? Yes, I think uh, it was a great turnout, especially for uh, younger people. I think uh, younger people are more interested in politics now, and they want to, they want to see change. Okay, I mean, Ayub from Rabat, with that analysis, thank you very much.